Hi, I'm Gabe. And I'm Kat. And we're the, the ghouls, ghouls Next, next Door. door. See, that's what we're talking about. What? So you say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about ecological apocalypses. Ap- apocalypsi. Yeah. It's spooky. As, as you know, we do sometimes. I need it. Remember that? Yeah. Remember was, that SpongeBob episode? I do. When he didn't drink. He needed the water, but he was pretending he didn't need it. But he does. That's like us of the planet. Yeah. We keep pretending like we don't need it, but we need it. Sure do. There's no planet B. <laughs> so I saw a, me- a meme. I think yes. they're called memes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yesterday. Nick, correct. And I think maybe you shared it or Travis shared it. And it was, it said something. <sighs> It said this is good that this is maybe good Mars had water on it. Oh yeah, <laughs> and we like destroyed it by like being all doing? crazy humany, and then essentially we ruined that planet. So they sent a pod with Adam and Eve in it to Earth, and then it had the FBI and it said, "Hey, delete that. <laughs> yeah, delete that right now." It also said that the the pod was the meteor that destroyed the dinosaurs. Yep, yep, yep. That's fun. I mean, who sounds, knows? That I'm not ruling right anything out. <laughs> I'm not ruin, ruling anything out with this. That sounds like the just right amount of conspiracy theory that like I can follow. <laughs> I'm like, that's some Battlestar Galactica stuff right there. I'm for it. It's really that's probably what happened. That, that's true. Battlestar Galactica had that whole plot where they needed the new world yeah and it was like they had already done this before yeah kind of thing oh yeah that was true yeah i never watched the last episode because i don't like to accept that things end um but yeah (laughs) i heard it was good but it had something to do with that that was like the theme this has all happened before yeah as there's another thing meme I want to bring up that's climate change related because climate change is popular. Um, where it's the <laughs> where it's the lady who's yelling Trippy. at the cat with the salad, <laughs> you know, the cat, and he's got his ears down. <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's like the lady yelling at the cat, and so the lady who's yelling it says, "People arguing over the Little Mermaid's race," and then the cat is saying, "Me trying to steer the conversation back to our climate crisis." Yeah, <laughs> this is by climate change, which is the name of the. The Instagram user. And then the caption says, the thing is, Karen, we're all going to be under the sea soon if you don't get your priorities straight. <laughs> and that's true. That's pretty good. And that's what this episode is about. Yeah. <laughs> we're all going to be under the sea or we're going to end up in Mad Max or we're going to, it's either the two, it's the two men that I get mixed up. It's either going to be Mel Gibson in Mad Max or it's going to be Day After Tomorrow with Dennis Quaid. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, it just seems like we've got very accustomed to a certain kind of lifestyle and mm-hmm. selfishly and naively don't know how to, what is it called, uh, self-regulate ourselves. Uh, we're very greedy yeah, and want comfortableness over like what everyone in the entire planet needs to continue to survive for more than the next 20 years. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yeah. This like, one at is... least in France, they turn off the wall. Like I remember we had foreign exchange students when I was in middle school and they told us that they turned their water off mid shower and do the soap time and mm-hmm. then put it back on to conserve water. And I was remember being like baffled by that. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, because that's what we should be doing. Yeah, there's entire, <laughs> that's what you need to do. like, countries in South America that are green, are entirely green run. Like, they get all their energy from, like, better <laughs> better energy sources than, yeah. say, coal. So, yeah, we are definitely damaging the earth. And that's like This one is, like, like, nuclear was more prominent before and viral is always eminent but ecological is one that we're like really facing down super real it's happening and that's what makes it most scary yeah it wins most scary it wins most Cause, scary because we'll it's see. like the it's it's scary in such like a practical way yeah well because it, it's like with nuclear it's like okay this could happen 
with viral, it's like it could happen, right? This is Ecological happening. is like, yeah, it's happening. It's happening. It's, happening. Right it's so. we are in it. We've already made it happen. Like yeah. we literally have to like change our things tomorrow so that we don't lose like decades and of time. Real, no, we're not gonna. No, not in America. No. Like no. we're just no. It's not <laughs> and it's terrible. Yeah. But that's what it is. Like ah. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I one person. I can't change it all. Yeah. But let's let's end the pessimism and get into some to more fun. pessimism. Yeah, like, let's yeah. tell you why it's a Aww. why it's an apocalypse. Come 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 with us on a world of pure imagination, except it's real. All right, Kat, are you ready to to be educated? Educated. Words to my face. <laughs> are you ready to hear the story? Whisper sweet nothings of apocalyptic upset times. <laughs> you got it. That's what we're here for. Horror. <laughs> That's what you tuned in for. So uh what I want to talk about today is what I found I discovered in the in my journey to figure out what the heck to talk about today which was uh this genre called cli-fi which i just love isn't that wonderful so let me okay let me explain so <laughs> one so film has horror film specifically has been our conduit for express expressing the very real and terrifying horrors around us and we yeah. tell this all the time right um and we and in film especially horror films they sometimes make sometimes absurd films but they show the real life horrors yeah. and we get to like kind of live vicariously through the characters on screen. Um, and it, it kind of helps us see what if scenarios being played out for us yeah. as an audience without having to actually have it be happening to us. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, so follow it. <laughs> yeah. So with the, this genre cli-fi, right. It not only like has us simulate a possible future, like a dystopian future or a dystopian present, honestly. Um, it also is there and has been proven to more or less kind of inspire change as well. Yeah. Because it's something that seems so real because it is <laughs> even when, even when the premise is absurd, People still are getting something out of it, which is yeah, kind of cool. Even, yeah, even if it's like super radical. It's, yeah. You know, it's real. Yeah. Ultimately, like the <laughs> message is real. <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, the genre cli-fi is short for what is called climate fiction. So like yeah. sci-fi, but for climates uh it's an it's, so it's a emerging, science yeah it's an emerging subgenre of science fiction focused on climate fiction novels movies and television usually focusing on climate disaster movies and dystopian climate-based movies which is what we're going to talk about tonight right like wally like wally exactly uh the term was first coined by dan bloom a taiwan-based blogger in 2007 and he used it to market an ebook called polar city red a dystopian story about alaskan climate refugees it wow. didn't go as well as he'd hoped but the name he made stuck <laughs> and that's, that's now just a such thing. a cool concept though like mm-hmm. you wrote a thing and then like that defines an this entire thing Google search. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It cool. helps us refine yeah. our search. Absolutely. So the the thing about sci-fi usually is that it takes place in a dystopian future. Like mm-hmm. it's like, what happens if X, Y, and Z now we live in this crazy future? Whereas cli-fi tends to happen in a dystopian present. It's mm-hmm. like it brings us right into it. Yeah. And even like when it's like future in quotations, it's like the near future. It's never like 3,000 years from now. It's like in 20 years, we're screwed. <laughs> I guess that's, that's like that's the reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like it's people aren't freaking out, and they should be. So it's just being like, hey guys, yeah. is this been? What are you? What are you doing? <laughs> it's yeah. here. It's, it's here happening. Now. It's happening. Yeah. So in so what I want to kick it off with with what I consider the first one of the first cli-fi films or the one that inspired a lot of things we're going to talk about it in our film section uh is the 1973 movie soylent green i'm sure you guys have heard the name but 
probably haven't watched the film. Most people haven't. But it's one of the more popular films to have climate change as a major element of the plot, um, as well as uh, overpopulation, the commodification of women, um, the toxicity of capitalism. Like there's a lot of topics that they take yeah. over in that, given that it's like kind of a short film and how much it's going over. Um, it felt very long. It was short. It felt, I thought it was short. Okay. I felt like yeah. it was short. Um, but it, <laughs> so Soylent Green was kind of like the start of a slew of cli-fi films that were there to warn us of the inevitable climate collapse. Right. So the growth of the environmental movement of the 70s was accompanied by eco disaster films from films called Grass uh, and Frogs to Prophecy and even Godzilla versus the Smog Monster. Right. It's all sound great. Yeah. <laughs> They're great. Um, I watch a movie called Grass. Yeah. Well, there's also like um, No Blade of Grass is one of them. There's like a bunch that were during that time in the 70s where people were like, wait a second, we're doing bad stuff. And now we're in 2019 and we're still doing bad stuff. Right. But these films are there just like the nuclear films were um, as to, like to serve as a reminder of like, what are we doing? We're on the path to destruction right now. Um, so... <laughs> There's also, um, so unlike Soylent Green, which depicted a big global warming scene, The Day After Tomorrow, which we're also going to cover, reminds us that climate change is a two-way street. It shows us a world that becomes a snow globe, right? So when we hurt our environment, it will inevitably hurt us back in an attempt to adapt. So um, according to researchers Chris Mooney and Cheryl Kirschenbaum, one study, suggested, <laughs> one study suggested those who had seen The Day After Tomorrow were significantly more worried about global warming than those who had not and were more significantly convinced that global warming could trigger specific weather and climactic impacts. I know that was its effect on me. Yeah, like you, you all of a sudden you were like, wait... <laughs> like they're they're doing a bunch of science garble, but it feels like who am I to say that's not real? Yeah, I mean I had weather drill. Yeah, things when I was a kid because I had just weird anxiety, and yeah. that was my nightmare with that movie. I was just like, that's that. Yeah, <laughs> this is everything I've trained for, mom. You ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, it definitely. So it is absurd. It's an absurd movie. We'll talk about how crazy it is, but yeah. there, it, it does have this lasting influence, right? Even in its absurdity, there's some grain of truth, right? So Michael Molitor, the primary science consultant for The Day After Tomorrow, had predicted this film could do more in helping us move in the right direction than all the scientific work in all the U.S. congressional testimonies put together. Nothing I have done in the 23 years of my climate change career may have a greater impact than this film. And in wow. an environment article report, it says the film led moviegoers to have higher levels of concern and worry about global warming, to estimate various impacts on the United States as more likely, and to shift their conceptual understanding of the climate system toward a threshold or tipping point model. So it put things into perspective of like, we are affecting our environment, right? Yeah. So <laughs> this is like what we've been preaching this whole time with our podcast is that Media can do something, right? And yeah. this is like a direct cause. Like it does inspire. Um, and in a way that like something like Inconvenient Truth inspired people, yeah. right? But Day After Tomorrow inspired more. <laughs> Cause well, because it, it was a more, I it was guess, a blockbuster, yeah. yeah, audience witnessing it. Um, in 2017, we got the cinematic drama Geostorm, which also takes place in 2022, which is when Soylent Green takes place. Um, its receptions by critics were somewhat lukewarm, but some seem to think it provides an interesting, not too distant future with climate change at the wheel driving the world's um, weather awry. So it's, it's similar to that, but it was a little more modern. Yes. than day after tomorrow. Um, in reality, climate change is more slow moving and complicated. Unlike the events in these Hollywood hits, a single natural disaster can't wipe out the entire planet. Um, it is advancing and becoming very worrisome, though. So it's, yeah, it's I mean, not as dramatic, but it is happening. Um, we've been on this planet for hundreds of thousands of years, yet half of our carbon footprint has manifested in the last three decades alone. Yeah. So like, because, and that's because of technology, like it, it grows exponentially. And now that's where we are. So in media, we tend to be attracted to the end of the world films out of our own masochistic needs to be both reprimanded and afraid. 
right? So it's like a weird mix of like human insecurity and arrogance. We are always waiting for the next big bad because we feel like we deserve that, right? So by watching horror apocalypse scenarios, we can live through the inevitable, see the damage we are causing. But unlike the heroes of these films, we get to go home to our um, not yet nearly uninhabitable, like, oasis, right? Yeah. Um, However, we want to be confronted by these feel, fears and to be scolded for our crimes against our environment without actually suffering for it. And that's why we have TV and film. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, when Margaret Atwood, who is the author of the ecological dystopia Apocalypse Orcs and Crake trilogy, and she's also the writer of Handmaid's Tale, yeah. um, she suggests that cli-fi novels and movies could be a useful way of educating young people about the dangers that face them, and she helps set the stage of what for what might come next. She also wonders, though, if cli-fi um, could end up being co-opted by the entertainment industry and become just another part of our culture of distraction and cute cat videos, right? Because oh, it's still yeah, funny. True. So it's like, it's inspiring, yes, but there's a level to it that is still like a distraction like yeah. making those films is still bad for the environment to a degree too you know yeah. like we can still turn it off and then drink our straws <laughs> like <laughs> drink from our straws right yeah. um but there's a, a multitude of cli-fi films right so there's films like water world mad max even wally are all cautionary tales warnings um essentially for us to take messages like inconvenient truth or life after people more seriously yeah right so it's just like if we can believe the narrative wally where it's just like we had to go off planet and then we become these big round people who don't use their muscles and <laughs> i would argue space. wally is a somewhat horror for kids it super is yeah it's terrifying those people are terrifying and even yeah. just like the desolation of everything like and what happened to the captain and it's like a mystery yeah and it's just with a cute robot <laughs> there but it, it is and it and it's that just like the reveal of that you know is kind of like when you're watching planet of the apes and yes. you're like, oh, my God, this is us. We did this. Ugh, are <laughs> <Yep>. you kidding? <laughs> so it, it, it definitely does that. Um, and I think having cli-fi films and, like, science fiction films where we see this dystopia where we've ruined the environment, it kind of helps. Because we'll talk about it in film section, but there's some scenes in Silent Green that have stuck with me since the first time I watched it where I was like, wow, could you imagine if we, like, lived in a world where that, like, the concept of grass is crazy? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think honestly, just like as humans, we have this complex about ourselves that we will be the ones to destroy us because there is no predator yeah. that can eat us or destroy us other than other humans. Yeah. So like our whole thing is that we're so arrogant in ourselves that like the only thing that can destroy us is us. Yeah. And we're doing it. There's that whole quote from, I don't remember which president said it, but it was like the America won't destroy itself or nothing will destroy America. America can only destroy itself from within. So true. And it's just like, that's what people are. People think <laughs> we are invincible except for from other people. Yeah. When we yeah. have the apocalypses, the biggest threat is the other humans that are alive and still with you. Yeah. Like we will destroy <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and with, I feel like what's interesting about the other scenarios that we're going to cover and we've covered is that there's like this human element to it, right? That makes it scary. Like with viral, it's like other people are scary because of that. Like nuclear, it's like other people are scary because they have control of the nukes, right? Uh -huh. Singularity is scary because it's like, what are people? What are robots? Whatever. But with this one, it's like, this is like literally like it's too late. <laughs> so yeah. it becomes where just the environment is scary. Yeah, and arguably it's like we're fighting something that we can't fight. Yeah. It is our planet. It's the thing in Avatar that you're supposed to take care of, mm -hmm. but we're the ones bulldozing trees. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, and it's going to fight back the happening yeah. style, hopefully. Oh my god, the <laughs> trees will good. come. It, oh will my god. Could you imagine? Us. That movie scared me so much. It was and I was just scary like, film. what if? I was like, how cute. <laughs> I was like, how cute, M. Night, that you made this climate change film. And it's, it's just, just like. It's so absurd. I love it so I, much. Yeah, and I feel like Cli Fi has that really unique niche in that 
it seems so absurd. Yeah. But like at the same time, you want to believe, you kind of believe it. Yeah. And it's just like fun because of that. Yeah. Like, honestly, all of them are just really fun. Mm -hmm. Like scary, but fun. Yeah. You're just like, oh, this is such a time. Look at that. (laughs) Because it's real. All right. So I'm going to tell you why it's real. Um, So in 1972, the book Limits to Growth was written. It asked the questions, what are the long-term effects of industrialization? industrialization and consumption on human destiny. That's the things we ask ourselves. <laughs> yeah, what are what we is doing? What is all the impact of all this awful stuff that we're doing? Yeah. Uh, morality and then also just like like, like the planet. Yeah. Um, at the long-term effects of industrial... Blah, 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 just kidding. At um, MIT, using a computer program, which is always fun, known as World 3, researchers had a model for future scenarios. So it basically predicted... Economic and population growth will be on 2000, followed by an inevitable and uncontrollable collapse of industrial society sometime prior to 2100. That's not, I feel like that's not that far. That's not far at all. (laughs) That is just like the tail end of our lives. Uh, My babies. That is our children will be greatly impacted because that's their time. No. That's a hundred years. Like, you yeah, know, that's, that's, yeah. We will it's be dead. Years from now. But you know who won't be dead? Our kids. Yeah. You know who hopefully. also won't be dead? Our grandkids. Ugh. If they can if survive. We have, if we're allowed to have them. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. What if it was Margaret Peterson Haddock's, like, the shadow children? Or no, Among the Hidden, where, like, you couldn't have three babies. So they, like, had this whole secret society of third children. It was wild. Yeah. That's our future because climate. Po- overpopulation. Yeah. So, so most likely this is caused by the combination of like just lots of people way too many people and then scarcity of food resources and energy or arguably i would say like quality food sources and energy Mm -hmm. because we're making a lot of food out of chemicals yeah but even still like we have to keep injecting animals with things in order to sustain the growth of them because naturally they wouldn't be able to keep up with the amount of population we have, which mm-hmm. is why Margaret Atwood's book, Orcs and Crake, you see that where we create like we, they create this like chicken monster, essentially, where it's just made of like it's just meat and yeah. it's just like a bunch of meat in it. But it's alive. It's gross. <laughs> so uh, that's fun. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, basically at the, our current rate of consumption, we only have 60 harvests left. I don't know a lot about farming, but that's a <laughs> that really doesn't seem like low a lot number. At all. That's it's like around that's, the corner. That's Real 60. Quick. That's not even, that's two numbers. It's not enough numbers, guys. <laughs> yeah. um, marine life is in a dramatic decline and Anar- Antarctica and the, has joined the North Pole in its whole melting situation. Yeah. So there's a lot of imp- implications of this. Basically... With the sea is the most important thing happening. It's rising because mm-hmm. of all the melting ice caps and all that other stuff. So our shores are moving up. There's that whole joke that Philadelphia will be waterfront property soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which is honestly Jersey. maybe not false. Yeah. <laughs> with this like, you know, rapid increase of yeah. water levels. AOC has like a... The, from the future tales from the future or whatever video where she's like we lost miami but yeah and like italy's sinking mm-hmm. greece is sinking uh california is on fire <laughs> yeah uh yeah so it's just like a lot of stuff's happening that it just seems like it's real far in the future and it's happening now mm-hmm. um so climate refugees are no longer a thing of fiction Parts of Africa and the Middle East will become uninhabitable in the near future. And the World Bank has already advised a number of countries to revise their immigration policies because they will be hit by tsunamis of migrants. I thought it was tsunamis of real <laughs> tsunamis. But I are also, I would argue that that's also a thing because when the ice falls into the ocean, mm-hmm, that is yeah. what creates we have more, tsunamis like, and large waves yeah. and devastation from the ocean mm-hmm. being like, hey. Plus what the off putting of like temperatures is how we get hurricanes and tornadoes. And that's why we've in Philly have had like every week we have at least one tornado warning, which is nuts. I don't think that's and ever flash happened. flood warnings all yeah. the time. I've never seen like this three many times a week tornado warnings. I don't nuts. know if I've ever seen a tornado in real life. Like the fact that that's like almost uh, every other week occurrence is insane. Mm-hmm. You also have flesh eating bacteria in like the beaches of yeah. East, like 
Eastern America. America. <laughs> yes. The northeastern the East beaches. Coast. Yeah. The shore, if you will, is filled with flesh eating bacteria because we've made the ocean mad, guys. <laughs> You've angered it. It's it is angry. a creature and it is mad and it is going to eat your flesh. Literally. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to keep going. So, the, globe, the uh, there's evidence of climate change as followed by NASA. So, maybe they should have stayed on the website of the president place. You know what I'm saying? The government website. Didn't they take NASA's Twitter away for a minute? <laughs> Wasn't that real? Not NASA, but they took some things away. They took climate change off of there. I'm pretty sure it's like, a, you're not allowed to say it. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, they, it's not a very flourished website. Also, yes. for every one person on the planet, there's one metric ton of trash that's generated <laughs> and less than 25% of that is recycled. Dope. So, and We're most of the really time when job. we recycle, it does like, it doesn't actually work. Yeah, so. <laughs> and then the most toxins leach into the groundwater, and if they're and in... escape into the air if they're incinerated. <laughs> yep. So it doesn't even go away all the way. Yep. We're, it's just we're here. Um, so also with that, we have the global rise in temperature. The planet's average surface temperature has risen about one point six two degrees Fahrenheit or zero point nine degrees Celsius since the late nineteenth century. A change driven largely by the increased carbon dioxide and other human made emissions. So you know. Been pumping all that smog yeah. into the, the sky. Smog monster Godzilla needs to fight. <laughs> um, most of the warming has occurred in the last 35 years, with the five warmest years on record taking place since 2010. Not only was 2016 the warmest year on record, but eight of the 12 months that made up that year from January through September, with the exception of June, were the warmest on record for those respective months. That's nuts. That's like, yeah. just like around the corner. That just happened. Yeah. <laughs> it was like yesterday. Yeah. Um, the oceans have been warming and absorbed most of the increased heat that we've been seeing with the top 700 meters or 2,300 feet. Right? Mm -hmm. That's how you say numbers? Yeah. Of ocean showing warming of more than 0 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit since 1969. Nice. <laughs> So, rise of sea levels, which is something I already said, basically eight inches in the last century. Ugh. Super cool. Um, the rate in the last two decades is nearly double that of the century previously. Wow. Um, and it's accelerating slightly every year. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> basically, extreme events. Uh, the number of high temperature events in the United States has been increasing with the number of record low temperature and events decreasing. So like we're not seeing crazy cold anywhere. I'd say this winter was pretty chill. Yeah. <laughs> Comparatively yeah, to the winter it was prior. Super warm, yeah. Um there were a lot of just really nice days, which yeah. I wasn't complaining about, but also yeah. <laughs> maybe I should have been complaining about a little bit more. Um and the ocean is getting super acidic. Acidification of the ocean is taking place. So since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, the acidity of the surface ocean waters has increased by about 30%. So the increase is a result of humans emitting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and hence is being, you know, absorbed sure. into the ocean. The ocean is like seeing the most mm -hmm. impact of like all these changes. And the amount of carbon dioxide absorbed by the upper layer of the ocean is increasing by about 2 million tons per year. Nice. It's a whole bunch. And more. There's a, there's actually on NASA's website, there's like 20 other categories of things that are proof Dope. to why our environment is dying. Awesome. Why the coral reefs being bleached are a problem. Like, I just think... And the entire island's full of trash. I just think that the fact that the ocean is eating us is a very clear indicator that something bad is happening. But yeah. So, you know, meanwhile. Yes. <laughs> here in the U.S., we are governed by those who prefer to erase the climate change data. Mm -hmm. Withdraw from the Paris Climate Accords. Sell our natural reserves to the developers and eliminate the Environmental Protection Agency. Fun. Uh, Clive <laughs> allows us to escape this reality by pushing it all up in our face. But, you know, <laughs> it shows a world in which the effects have occurred and the world we know lives on, usually without us in it. 
Or we're eating each other. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. Uh, And anyone less surviving would have to adopt and learn to respect nature or suffer the consequences. This is all to say our fears are not without merit. We're all going to (laughs) die. We're all there. The environment is in danger and these films and media are here to bring it to light. And the intensity in which we are destroying the only habitable place for us habitable you think we're going to mars guys we're not going to mars mars doesn't have things we need why would we and go it's there happening tomorrow yes at the very least so in 2100 when we're all dead cool i guess uh, we had that's a good our kids problem. maybe we'll get smarter that'd be cool <laughs> as a collective unit i doubt that yeah, So we watched two movies. Well, we've watched, I mean, we've watched most of these. Like, like I've seen Waterworld. I've seen Mad Max. I've seen Wally. I've seen Soylent Green, which we're going to talk about. I've seen. Gabe's seen more than me. <laughs> I've seen Wally. You haven't seen Waterworld? Nope. It's so crazy. They have gills. Or Mad the guy Max. has gills. Mad Max, I watched the first 10 minutes and I just like really it's could not lot. get on board with what was happening. It, it was is- just so stressful. I was like, nah. I'm going to turn this off. And then I did. And then I never went back. And I still kind of don't want to see it. Just because, like, it was just, like, the weird society was really stressful to me. Like, I just, no. I can't get on board. I don't think it's cool. I wasn't, I was just scared. Yeah. But, like, not in the scared I like to be. I was just like, no. It's very intense because it's just awful Mm -hmm. people. And the thing is, like, so I feel like, you know, so... I was telling Kat that I get Dennis Quaid and Mel Gibson mixed up because they were like in similar-ish movies at the time. They were always playing like a dad or something. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because it's like we have Mad Max, Waterworld, which is Kevin Costner. And then we have The Day After Tomorrow, which is Dennis Quaid. Is that his name? Yep. Yeah. And all of those. (laughs) We're there. Yeah. All of them kind of looks the same to me. It's just like white dad dealing with climate see so you can't get mad at me when i'm like blonde lady <laughs> yeah mixing those guys up if you get mixed up with three. dennis queen and mel gibson yeah i don't understand it but we're not going to talk about mad max or water world although that was i was very much tempted it was definitely in our notes where i was like should we watch water world but I it's just so crazy because i don't know what that is but it's I, a nightmare for you the entire oh. world is water. Oh. And it's bad because, like, we oh. can't drink it because it's the ocean. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, the whole, like, everyone's just living just on everywhere? boats. Is the sharks just everywhere? I don't know. There's even sharks. I don't what think happens? that's a part of it. People just drown. People just drown. Or they just don't swim. It's it's cra- It's like Mad Max, but on in the water. It's literally so that. pirate? Yeah, pretty much. Like, like future pirates. And dun, dun, they have, like, dun, dun, cool, dun, 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 like, fish. Dun, 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 like, dun, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's not dun, Pirates dun, of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> but, so we didn't watch this for the sake of this <laughs> this episode. But definitely watch them. And if you guys ever want to just talk about <laughs> Waterworld and Mad Max, we'll do that. I can't. I don't think I can see either of those. You I could definitely. Like I just be devastated. You could watch time. Waterworld. It's cute. Okay. The girl is like well, a mat. It's it doesn't yeah. make any sense. It's very silly. But yeah. we well, let's did talk about the film series. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so we watched Soy and Green, which is from 1973. Um, which I think it aged decently. Like, it's I pretty wasn't good. Like, that movie's really old. Like it was like oh, this is interesting. Yeah, and it's it's Charles Charles Heston. Charles Charles Heston. Charles Heston. No. No. Charlton Heston. I really hate it. Uh, Charlton. It just doesn't sound right together. I'm sorry. Rename I didn't name him. him. He's just gone, I think. That's sad. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so sorry, people. If you know more about Charlton Hester, please tell us. Um, but Soylent Green. So here's what Soylent Green is about. <laughs> tell me. So in the world ravaged by the greenhouse effect and overpopulation, an NYPD detective investigates the murder of a big company CEO. And it's directed by Richard Fleischer. So what I think I is really know, funny Fleischer, when you so think about it, is that it's he's a NY he's NYPD, but like that didn't look like New York. No, both of these things take Absolutely place in New not. York, and like one is just like sad because you're seeing New York die essentially. In this yeah. one, it's like it's already gone. Like it's so it doesn't it looks like it looks Arizona. Like, yeah, it looks nothing <laughs> like New York. It looks super weird. 
And like, yeah. It just, <laughs> I didn't even realize it was in New York. And it probably said it a bunch of times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the, the film's opening prologue, it states the year 2022. The oh. place, New York City. The population, 40 million. Is that what that is? Yep. Okay. <laughs> 40 million. That's a lot. I don't know how many people live in New York now. I'm going to do a Google. But why don't you tell people about it? Yeah. So it was a time. <laughs> it was... The whole thing was, like, there was this whole upper society that was still trying to live like the previous world. So they had electricity and they had beef. Um, and But that was still, like, a commodity. And, like, strawberries were $300 a jar. Yeah, and the electricity was the guy who had to ride the bike. So the old man would, like, pow- ride a bike and it essentially powered the lights in their apartment. And it was absurd that they had an apartment that was essentially, like, one big room. Yeah, no, but the rich people had oh, the those rich things people, without yeah. it. So, yeah. like, there was, like, this upper ring of, like, capitalistic society that had a woman that was just a part of the house. Yeah, she came with the apartment. Which is... Ew. Yeah, and that's how ew. all the women were portrayed. Ew. Objects. Ew. Yeah, super ew. Yeah, so, like, I just don't want to live in that future, but also, um, it was, yeah, it was real cringy in that way, but, like... Realistically, if the world goes to crap, mm-hmm. that seems like where we're going. There's a one percent that are living in their lofts and are unawares. Well, the of rest the of the us world starve and around die. Us. Like, yeah. uh, by the yeah. way, there's eight million. A little. There's like eight point six million people in New York. So it's we have uh, just a handful of years to get to 40, 40 million. So. Who knows? Yes. Uh, have Math. some babies in there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the film is like, essentially, this rich guy um, is murdered. Mm-hmm. And Charlton Heston's character, Thor, that's his name, is investigating it yep. as a police officer. And he's like, something is funny. Something weird is happening. Mm-hmm. Because, like, he, the guy told people to leave. Like, his security wasn't around, blah, blah, blah. And, like, accepted that he should die. Yeah. Like, he was like, nah, this needs to happen. Yeah. He was Kill like, me, he please. was honestly like an Amazon CEO. It was weird. And he, <laughs> they were, they killed him because they were like, the news is going to get out about what Soylent is, essentially. Yeah. And then, I feel like everyone knows the spoiler of Soylent Green, so I'm going to tell you. Soylent Green is people. Yeah. That's the whole, that's the big reveal. So when the overpopulated people die because they've killed all the animals and all green life and all that other stuff is that they mush up the people the dead people um into food Mm -hmm. that's green yeah because there's no green left so they make them green (laughs) and you eat that and it's humans well yeah eating humans and it was like it was color-coded like they had like a soylent brown a soylent whatever um a bunch of that so yeah it was like and Soylent is supposed to be soybeans and something else. Lentils. It's supposed to mm. say, meet, represent Soylent, soy and lentils. But we have Soylent now, which I think is crazy. There's a an actual company that goes by Soylent. They saw that film and were like, you know what? That's where we're headed. I mean, we might as well get on top of this now. If they for what, like if for Halloween they do not come out with a very specific green, like it just dyed green, like they do their one chai version or their lot their vanilla version, and they just dye it green for Halloween. I don't know what they're doing. Like their their news team needs to get it together. I think they don't want to be branded as pe- like you're drinking. <sighs> they people. should definitely be branded as drinking people. I don't. I feel like you no. Know. It's I feel fun. like no. It's is it though? Cuz what if you think that it's true now? You know what's funny? There I saw this post and it was that um it was like new uh it was like congratulations uh former cannibal vegans. There's now a vegan substitute where it's like artificial human meat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and was, I was like it's funny cuz yeah. I eat artificial meat. Eat, listen, people one little thing. If you have Meatless Monday, you are going to impact the environment a lot. If everyone had one day where they didn't eat meat, 
You literally help the environment. I have a bunch of days where I don't eat meat. I'm so good to the world. You're so nice. Every day is my day to not eat meat. (laughs) Sometimes I don't eat all day and then I eat a peanut butter sandwich. (laughs) That's okay. Well, (laughs) that's a different conversation. I think we need to talk about planet cat because that needs to get taken care of. It's called stress. (laughs) Um, Another. So the one thing about this film that really gets me is... One, the fact that they covet these things that we take for granted, right? So, like, when mm-hmm. he finds the strawberries and he, like, gets... He literally gets a spoon of mm-hmm. it and he gives it to his... his the, the older man. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, my God, these would like be, like, $500. But he's just like, strawberries, like, real strawberries. And then when they have meat, it was like, oh, my God, real meat. It was, like, this really drastic thing for mm-hmm. something that we're just like, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. But on top of that was the scene where, spoilers, the old man goes to die because when you're after a certain age, they, you just are done. Mm-hmm. They don't need you anymore. Not like Midsummer. <laughs> hey, spoilers. Ah, I'll take it out. I'm sorry. Uh, um, but they, uh, so they put you there and what they do is they put you in a room, they play smooth jazz, if that's what you like, and they show you video footage of the world before. Yeah, so just like deer in a field. Yeah, and he was like, water, whoa. just existing, just he was water's like, wow. there. And there was like fish in it. Yeah, and he was like, whoa, yeah. It's beautiful. Like this is what I said existed, and it was yeah. really emotional. Everyone's crying. Yeah, and then he goes and finds out that we're eating people. Yeah, and Thor is like watching too, and he and the old man's like, see, I told you that these things existed. Like, why are they living in a world where they don't even have like videos all the time? Like. It's crazy. Um, I feel like maybe they, they don't want people, people to more be sad. depressed. Yeah, yeah, of like what they've lost. Yeah. Uh, fun fact: I learned today that Miley Cyrus said she's not having children because she doesn't want them to live in a world where there's like not going to be any fish or anything. Like it's bad for the environment, which is like cool, I guess. <laughs> but that's, that's just a where fun I fact. Was at yeah. For a minute. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. So of one. Just kidding. I don't know. I can't say that. It's not only my choice. Yeah. (laughs) Well, we watched another movie as we do. We did. It's one of my favorites. Like, I didn't, I forgot it was my favorite for a minute. But like, (laughs) I love that movie when I was younger. So we watched uh, The Day After Tomorrow from 2004. Um, And it's Jack Hall, paleoclimatologist, which is not a made up word apparently, (laughs) must take a daring trek from Washington, D.C. to New York City to reach his son, trapped in the crosshairs of a sudden international storm which plunges the planet into a new ice age. Yeah, instantly. The day after tomorrow is actually today in that film. It's not any time tomorrow. It's now. It's now. The day today. (laughs) The day after right now. So it's created by Robert Emmerich and... It's a fun time. Yeah. Like, so I remember really liking that film. And then, like, there was this thing where I was in college and you're like, if you like The Day After Tomorrow, like, you think it's a deep and meaningful film, you're, like, dumb. And you're going to realize when you're older that it was really, really stupid. I was like, no, it's still fun. I was watching it. I was having a good time. And it's not that, like, it's stupid. But it's, like, there's also also things to learn from it. Like, it was just being a very overdramatic teenager about a very real situation. Yeah, and it was just like, I guess it was more so, it's like, if you think this is an eye-opening film, it's like, I guess it is, because you need to realize that this is real. Like, this is gonna, like, not in this way, but, but like, it's sort of happening now. Like, we're experiencing all these, like, impacts of climate change, Mm -hmm. and people are denying it and denying it, and it's just Mm -hmm. gonna sneak up on us. Yesterday was July 1st, and now it's July 15th almost like and i'm just like that happened overnight so like it's gonna be 2100 <laughs> tomorrow and not the yeah. day after tomorrow it's the day it's today it's from now, here. But it's not that far and we're all gonna die guys we need to really get it together it's like maybe it's too late and you just kind of gotta cope a little yeah the thing the just i think not the, make it any more bad yeah i think the catch in what we've learned from climate change films or just climate change studies is that like we we're damaging the earth, yeah, but the earth is going to live on. It's just going to... Not it's have just us. Yeah, just whether or not it's going to be habitable for us. But we forget that, like, literally, the earth is at the perfect situation for us to be on it. Yeah. So, like, if any of those perfect situations are no longer there, we don't exist. We yeah. just die and it still goes. Mm-hmm. Life after people. Tokyo, yeah, what it's gonna be. whatever, what was Tokyo it? Tokyo Ghoul, or not Tokyo Ghoul. No. <laughs> Tokyo... 
Jungle. Tokyo Jungle, which is a, a cool game. It's a fun game on PlayStation. Yeah. But yeah, so apparently uh, the Red Cross put up several stands at theaters in the U.S. featuring pamphlets with information on what to do to keep safe during tornadoes, floods, and blizzards for concerned people who had just viewed the movie, which yeah. is fun. Because they I come out like and they're like, me ah! was like in my like little drills that I would do. Uh-huh. So I like just watched like videos of tornadoes and stuff and I was yeah. like, I'm ready. Yeah. And it's like cute that they did that too. They're like, this is what you need to do now. Yeah. Tornadoes are coming. Yeah. And it's like they are because we, we get them every, every week. Day. It makes me think of like the last of, um, what was it? The, what's that cute dinosaur movie? With um, Land Before Time. Land Before Time. You know, Love when the last movie. one was there and we knew that they were going to die from the meteor. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's what climate change movies are. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's like we're the we're the last <laughs> the land before time, and we're like we love these creatures. I love Ducky. I love all of them. And then it's like, oh, they're all dead. <laughs> so that's fun. Yeah, that's gonna be us. <laughs> Some new species that has gained like intelligence and all this stuff is gonna like the X Files. They're gonna they're make uh, what's it called like culture mm. around this world that we've. Yeah, left behind study our like, weird what are these memes? ancient civilizations yeah. primitive beings they are <laughs> they found humor they need air with not a bunch of carbon they monoxide used meat. in it it's like that a horror story where it's just like the meat they talk with their meat yeah. remember that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um <laughs> Apparently, 20th Century Fox invited a group of scientists to preview this movie and to test their reactions to the science used in it. But none of the scientists were impressed with what they saw. But they did say that it was enjoyable nonsense. They were like, none of this is real. This is all like a joke. But also, it's fun. We're having a fun time at the absurdity of these events, but also climate change is real. Did is they, what they say were doing. paleoclimatologist was <laughs> a fun name? Did they say what? <laughs> I I don't know if that's a real word, but it, I, it leads me to believe that it's a person that studies past climate events. Yeah. Like the Ice Age. I just think it's a really fun word. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a new Ice Age and we'll all be saber-toothed versions of things. Maybe we'll get giant sloths again. I'm just saying that would be fun. Wow, we can ride them. I don't, no, we're not going to be here. That's true. You're we're so right. Be super what if we dead. become saber tooth? What people? if we mutate? <laughs> um, so there was also a consultation by NASA scientists. Um, they were requested to do that um, before the filming of the movie, but NASA stated that the events in this movie were too ridiculous actually to occur and denied the request. <laughs> NASA sent a memo out to all of its employees stating that they were not allowed to comment on the likelihood of the events portrayed. And eventually they revoked that. They were like, it's whatever. You can say whatever you want. You're free people. But they were like, don't like approve or deny anything on it. It's just it's not even worth our time. Yeah, like don't scare people or like Under, devalue it because yeah. like then the whole point of the film, I think, is to be a good time, but also just like remind people like it might not happen like this, but something's happening. Yeah, and we had to make it fantastical so that it would count as a movie and not a documentary. Yeah, <laughs> like a fiction movie instead of a documentary. <laughs> yeah, N A S A. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fun, it's such a crazy film because it's like, if you guys don't know what it is, it was where uh, the ice caps are melting and they discover that and it causes a bunch of um, like natural storms and things like that. There's like flooding because of the ocean uh, is overflowing and rising. Mm -hmm. And then it causes like an entire, so like essentially like our, our, world is warming right like Mm -hmm. we are doing that um but it's like there's an entire shift that usually takes hundreds of years happens literally overnight Mm -hmm. and it all of a sudden now everything is frozen and so it's just not like the fun disney movie frozen yeah you're not building snowmen let it go yeah (laughs) you can't let it go because it's yeah it's tragic but it's like crazy but you get to see like new york essentially get destroyed and it's a it's it's a, a crazy story, but it's also about the people, right? Like you're mm-hmm. learning, and you, you have the dad who's the climbing paleo climatologist. Climbing is what you just said. <laughs> yeah, the climatologist <laughs> would be more 
accurate. No, he's a paleoclimatologist who goes and finds his son. And then there's like the, his ex-wife is a doctor. And it's like, how do we make sure these people are so protected in a world where there's no ice everywhere? Mm -hmm. Um, and they're in a library and they burn, I forget who it was. Marilyn's allergic to penicillin and cuss herself and it's bad. And then I learned how you like treat an infected wound for that movie yeah it, yeah there's yeah. some weird things but it's like it is really really silly and silly just like how 2012 was silly just like geostorm is silly um but it's still like if if you we need to make something silly like that in order for people to be like wait a second let me do some research because like if that draws people to google then it, like we're doing something yeah and that's what it did honestly for me. And it made me very aware that, like, medicines will be a big thing if yeah. any big catastrophic event happens where it's like, oh, I need a lot of stuff to survive. Yeah. All right. Now I need to plan. You know, it's just good to have that in your brain. Yeah. They're yeah. good films. Watch all the, the cli-fi because there's a lot of them and they're all fun and they range from all kinds of genres, I think, which is mm-hmm. fun. There's all right. So whatever. <laughs> I don't remember which one's positive, but all I'm saying is. So if it, if you don't like it, it's Silent Green is people. Yeah, because it just has to be in there. It's, it's government led cannibalism. Yeah, it's government sanctioned cannibalism. It is. I mean, it's like you know, whenever they're like eat the rich. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but instead we're eating everybody. All I'm saying is, I get it. Remember the Donner Party? We covered that. I don't think we should eat people, but if we've destroyed all the other food, it's our fault. It doesn't, but it doesn't taste like people. Yeah. Right? So that's... I'm not... not, (laughs) We're already advocating for cannibalism. We're already in a better place than... (laughs) But you (laughs) have a... (laughs) You have a population problem. I'm isolating (laughs) that. Remember, so there was like a short story I read in high school that was essentially um, where it was, yeah, it was just like the way to fix the population problem was that we should just eat people or we should just eat, (sighs) we should eat poor children or something. It was crazy. Yeah, it was like absolutely absurd, but it was written like ironically to be like, you guys are, this is how absurd you guys are, that you would probably see this as a positive. Ah. Yeah, don't eat, don't eat children. I don't mean, ch- I mean the dead ones. Like in the movie. Yeah. Don't, you don't eat the ones that are alive. We're not doing a, the, the, what is it, the perfect, where they hunt them, the hunt them, the people, the perfect game or something. Yeah. Where it's like the guy hunts the, the people. Yeah. We're not doing that. I'm not advocating for that kind of camp. The most one. dangerous game. The most dangerous game, that's what it was. Which is like not... It's just da- the dangerous game. Most dangerous. It's the most like dangerous that. game. That's, I know, but I don't like the, the, the way that that's designed grammatically. It's anyway, okay. so, if you, so if, if you don't like it, if you it's, don't like it. <laughs> it's Soylent Green is people because yeah. it's cannibalism. Uh, um, I if, guess. You, <laughs> if you do like it, it's, do you want to build a snowman? You can't because in two seconds you will freeze to death. Yeah. You can't. No, you there's can't no let it go. It's happening. Yeah. Get it the, together. The cold did bother you at this point. Get so. it together. So for Cli-Fi. I'm about it. Yeah. I don't want to build that snowman, but <laughs> I want to watch Cli-Fi movies. Yeah. I like them. We should definitely watch more Cli-Fi. It's and just fun. I just it's just Wally. It just gets all my fears and it's just like, here, enjoy. It's They're all here together. Yeah, it's great. It's so fun. Uh, what about the films we watch? They're fun. I like them. I also yeah. want to freeze to death in Snowman Land. Yeah, making the little snowman. I forget what his name is. Olaf. Olaf. Um, yeah. I teach children. I know too much about <laughs> movies that are children movies. Yeah, I like I like Snow and Green. I think everyone should watch it once. Because it's, really it's just good. so yeah, important. Like it was fun. And it was like stressful. And it was, yeah. There were definitely a lot of things that were like shocking about it. Mm-hmm. But I like, I know I was watching a horror movie, but like, you know, it's like, yeah. Ah. 
whoa yeah well like the commodification of women is such a weird like i totally forgot that the first round Mm -hmm. and now i was watching it and i was like wait a sec she just said she is she's just a uh a furniture. She's a part of the house. <laughs> she oh is, my god! Like, and then the guy like buys the apartment. And he's like, "You're mine now." And she's like, "Yep, <laughs> yeah, yo." And they like slapped around all those women. Oh my god, it was absurd. I would super rather be dead. Yeah, it's yeah. And then there's also I will like because that's yeah. It's not there was also like a bunch of people who were just like sleeping. Like the the floor was just littered with people. Yeah, everywhere. It was nuts. So I definitely wouldn't want to be in the world of Soylent Green. Not just because we end up eating people, but because, like, it sucked. And the day after tomorrow also sucked, because I just feel like Philadelphia would have been screwed. Because when they were going through, at one point when he, like, lost, they, like, got lost or something, he was like, where are we? And they're like, we're, like, 20 miles outside of Philly. And it was bad. It was a snow apocalypse mm-hmm. for sure. And I can't deal with the snow we have here as it is. And we're not, um, our buildings are shorter. Yeah. If They're the not water designed comes, for yeah, flooding. If at the all. water comes, we're we're under it. We don't get to stay alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I do want to give credit to um, NASA, uh, Cause Girl, which is like a, a website I found, and then also Barry Vacker with his book The End of the World Again, which was actually my professor at Temple, oh, who cute. taught um, apocalypses in media. So yeah. I got a lot of information from that. You'll hear more stuff from him next week. Um, it was a really good class, and it kind of inspired a little bit of this podcast to begin with. So I want to shout out to him. Should reach so, out, yo, be like, hey, Barry. remember me? I went to your class. <laughs> look at look at me do stuff. I'm I read about now. you again afterwards. You should come on our I podcast. I bought your book, dude. Barry. <laughs> yeah, Barry, why aren't you on our podcast? Come on, hang out. Yeah, be cool. Be cool, be cool like the environment. <laughs> oh my god yeah. i'm never laughing like that that again. was that crazy was really gross. yeah okay but yeah so this was uh the ecological apocalypse stay tuned we got two dope, more dope, dope, dope. well we've kind of got three more apocalypse i to explore in this this endeavor so <laughs> remember yes. don't get married or have kids yeah, don't have kids because because <laughs> there's not enough resources for you and them, and then we'll you eat they'll eat you because you're you old die. and you have to die, and yep. no one's building stuff. So they'll eat you. You Soil don't eat green your kids. Is you. It's the reverse. Soil and green is your you. Your kids will eat you. Ah, <sighs> so full circle.